All right, so here we are inside of our own photo raw, and you know the thing that captured me about this image is this little medallion piece or whatever hood ornament, I think is what it's actually called, on the front of a vehicle. So what I need to do here is start working with the light and the color. And I think since there isn't much interest in this particular photo, I'm going to go ahead and make it black and white because I think that that will help with highlighting the chrome on the hood ornament here. I'm going to play around with the color response. I know that in the upper right corner here, we have some reds and yellows. So I think I can make those a little bit darker. So all of my attention is coming right here into this hood ornament. And I may even crop this later. So I'm really just experimenting here. Um, in fact, let's just jump into a crop. I think that that would be worthwhile. And I'm filling a vertical crop for this particular image. So we're gonna come up here to our aspect ratio. I'm gonna grab a four by five crop and I'm just going to make it a vertical because I want it to actually be vertical. And then we'll just pull in a little bit here, maybe something like this. I think that this helps with the overall attention being right here on the hood ornament. I'm keeping that reflection in the image, leaving some head space over the top, as well as some room down here at the bottom to help draw everything into the image. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the blue check mark to commit that. And now it's time to work on the overall photo. So this is way too bright up here and this is way too dark. So it's time to go to local and shape the light. Now, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a masking bug and I'm just going to click up here at the top using a gradient mask, rotate this around, and it's going to help me darken that top part of the image. And I'm going to go ahead and really drop this exposure down because this could be distracting this is also a little distracting, so I'll probably do something with that as well. But I wanted to start with the top portion first. Now, I should be renaming these, but for speed's sake, I'm not going to rename them. It is a good practice to rename your layers, or at least your adjustments. The next one, I'm going to use a brush, and I'm just going to paint very loosely over this area, just like so. And then I'm going to pull down... And I'm not trying to eliminate this. I'm just trying to reduce it. And so pulling down on the exposure there, and then I'm going to pull down on the highlights and maybe even push this away from whites just a bit. And maybe I'll bring back some of the exposure because I don't need to get rid of it. I think people will know that there was reflections and it helps actually show that this is a shiny background that this is sitting on. So I'm going to go with that. Now, the next thing that I need to do is really help the hood ornament kind of show, or I need to show the hood ornament, I should say. So I'm just going to go ahead and add another adjustment. And this time I'm going to use a radial gradient. So get my masking bug. I'm going to grab the vignette tool. I'm just going to click here and that's impacting everything outside. That's not what I want. So I'm just going to come over here to my mask, invert it. And then I am now painting everything on the inside of this particular gradient. I'm going to make it a little bit more long and oval shaped just like so. And then I'm going to, instead of a negative exposure, which the negative exposure doesn't actually look too bad on this image, but I'm going to go ahead and pull this up just a little bit. And in fact, let's go ahead and reset the exposure and I'll open the shadows and maybe even increase the highlights. And then I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to do it on the outside and make everything on the outside a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add another adjustment and I'm going to minimize this for a second. Since I already have this relatively in the place where I want it, I'm just gonna copy this mask and then come over here and paste the mask onto this layer. 
I'm going to go ahead and hit the letter M so I get my masking bug controls. And then I'm going to invert this because again, I want this to be on the outside. So we'll invert it. And even that is starting to make this look a little bit better, but it's too much of a vignette around just the ornament. And part of editing is being subtle, or at least that's something I like to try to do. I can't say that I always do it, but I do try. So maybe something like that. And now I think it's starting to take shape. So let's take a look at it. This is the before and this is the after. Now it still has quite some ways to go. And I think the rest of this is really gonna happen inside of the black and white filter. So we're gonna jump over to effects and I'm gonna come down here to my tone portion. Let's just minimize all this stuff that I don't need. And we're gonna click on tone. That's gonna expand the tone controls inside of this particular tool. Now I can hit auto off just to see what it wants to do. And I don't really like what that does. So I want this to be a more moody and dramatic black and white. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and pull down on the blacks just a little bit further. I'm gonna push up on the whites because that's gonna help with building that contrast. And then I'm also going to increase some of the detail. Now, I know that I've been uh, claiming that I wanna go less sharpened or less detail in the images. And I, I kinda do still think that that look would be okay. Like this gets a little bit more abstract. This could get really abstract. This gets a little bit more abstract. And I don't have anything against being abstract. That's just not what I'm going for. At least that's not what I'm feeling for this particular image. So I am going to push this up just a little bit and I'm gonna go with that. Now the filter that I think is going to help set this off is a, a bleach bypass filter, almost at cross process. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw that on. And just by turning this off and turning it on, you could see how it's just making a deeper, darker, richer black. And I love doing that. I love using bleach bypass in my black and white images. And I could play around with the contrast to really dial this in just where I want it to be. And maybe, maybe that is where I would have it. So if I turn it off and turn it back on, you could see what it's doing to the image. Now, the last thing that I'll throw on here is a border because I do like throwing borders on my black and white images. For some reason, it just helps make them go to the next level, at least in my opinion. And I just use the simple white. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull back on the scale of this border. And that gets me right around here. And I think that this works pretty good. So I'm gonna show you the before and the after. Now, I'm noticing that I could have cleaned up some of these specs, so let's just jump over here to our retouching tool, and I'm going to paint this area away right here. That works, and then I'll also paint away this area. Just some of these brighter little specs that don't need to be there, or at least I don't think they need to be there, and it just helps with the overall sale of the image. And you know, this is subjective. You don't have to get rid of this. I mean, all of photo editing is subjective, but hopefully you get the point of why I did that. All right. So let me show you what it looks like with all of those retouched things still in there. So this is with all the retouching turned off. It's really, really minor, but when I turn it back on, it just cleans up the image and makes it look a little bit more pristine and it's a nice overall photo. Is this portfolio worthy? I don't think so, but I do like the style that I got on this particular image. So hopefully you found some value in today's content. If you did, smash the like button. If you wanna learn more about using On One Photo Raw, consider signing up for a training call. The link is in the description box below. And if you got questions about any techniques inside of On One Photo Raw, leave them in the comments section below. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.